everybody. Today we're going to be focusing on this exercise which is doing an all-white painting from a still life setup. And I think that following along from the last color mixing exercise that I showed you, this will be really useful in helping you um, further figure out color mixing. And I think basically if you can figure out how to paint whites, then you can paint any color in the world. Um, and whites just really help to, to make you really, really see the actual colors and kind of forget what you think you know about the colors. So here I've set up this uh, little very simple still life. It's just a ramekin and then I created this like backdrop for it with some foam core. So you can do this with any white object in your house. Um, you know, we could have used a bowl or a teacup or even eggs are really good. Um, use some white eggs. And it doesn't have to be like pure white either. It can be a neutral color and that's fine too. But I would say, you know, if you can get something really white and with a really white background, uh, that'll be the best. And for this, I'm going to be using a limited color palette. Obviously, I need a lot of white paint. And you can use any, um, any set of primary colors for this exercise. You can use your earth color palette, which I showed you in the last lesson. I chose to use my prismatic color palette here. So the yellow that I just put down is cadmium yellow medium. And then I'm going to be using cadmium red light. And cerulean blue. Yeah, but absolutely any um, set of three primary colors will work for this. So um, yeah, use whatever you're curious to experiment with. So my challenge here is to look for kind of how many colors I can see in this setup um, and get a sense of the light and shadow by mixing different colors. So the first thing I notice is I have this light, um, you can see, just this kind of light that's shining on it, um, and that light is a bit of a warm tone, it's kind of a yellowish light. So in my lightest areas on the still life, those are going to have a bright yellowish tone, and then the shadow areas I feel like I see a lot of bluish tones in those areas, so I'm going to be playing with that yellow versus blue interaction. Now I think it's helpful with this to look first for where your darkest moments are and where your lightest moments are. So, and if you squint your eyes, that really helps. Um, I think my darkest moments in this are like right inside the ramekin right there. Um, there's a really dark shadow. Also right under here it's dark. Maybe around the rim right there is also really dark. So those are my darkest. My lightest. I mean so like the ground right here is really light. Over here it's really light, but even if I look farther than that, um, there's a highlight along the rim there that's noticeably much brighter even than this big light area there. Um, and yeah, there are some highlights in a few places that I can see. Uh, there's one along here, there's one inside down there. So I'm going to have to calibrate all my colors to those brightest lights, the brightest highlights, and then the moments of the darkest dark. 
So I have my canvas here. I'm using a canvas panel for this. And I'm thinking, so this is white right now. I'm thinking it might actually make sense to tone it a little bit so that, you know, when, when this is white, I'm always going to be fighting this brightest white color um, until I get all the paints on it. So I think I'm just going to put kind of a neutral tone over the whole thing. Maybe kind of bluish to be a little bit like that, um, the main shadow mask color. And because I'm using this prismatic palette, these colors are super, super bright, which doesn't necessarily reflect um, the kind of neutral tones of all of the colors in here. So that means that I'm going to have to do a lot of mixing um, throughout this exercise because pretty much every color I put down, I'm going to have to sort of neutralize it a little bit by having um, a bit of all three primary colors in it. Because, you know, there's nothing as bright as this red in there. There's nothing as bright as this yellow. Yeah, even the blue. So this is something I don't normally do, but I think it just makes sense to try it here. And if you happen to have a canvas that already has a tone on it, like if it has um, like a gray tone or a brown tone or something like that, you could just go ahead and use that. So I'm just going to like scrub over the canvas with this a little bit. so I'm not totally sure uh, how it's going to interact with the paint that I put on top of it, but we'll find out together. Maybe I'll just rub it a little bit to make sure it's not too wet. Yeah, that's probably good. And now, this isn't super important, but if it helps you, you can, um, just with a smaller brush, you can sketch out your composition on here a little bit, just keeping it very simple, but, you know, it might help for when you're putting the areas of color in. So, let's see, I guess I make my little window to look through. I don't really like that so far. Like if I put the back wall here. Trying to decide if I want this whole shadow that it's casting to be on the canvas or if I'm okay with it going off. And one thing that really helps 
whenever you're drawing something that's round, like a, you know, a cup or a plate or a bowl or something like that, is draw in center lines. So the center line of that would be like there and then something like that. That just really helps to make it figure out how to make the pieces of it symmetrical. And I think I'm just going to mark the shapes of the shadows in here a little bit too. So there's a shadow that goes kind of like that. And then on the outside, a shadow that goes like that. Right. Yeah, so there's my basic drawing. And it's, again, it's not anything set in stone. It's not detailed. It's just to help me figure out where I'm going to put my different colors. All right, so now, should I start with the darkest or the lightest? Maybe I'll start with the darkest since I think this color I have here is fairly close to that anyway. Um, maybe a little too dark. Well, let's see. So what I'm doing here is I know it's going to be a pretty neutral color, and I'm looking for the color that's going to go like right in here, right along the edge here, maybe under the edge here. Um, yeah, and I think something like this might be good for now. I might end up having to lighten it a bit, um, but let's try it. And for my mediums here, in here I just have... Um, Gamsol, which I've been thinning the paint out with so far. In this jar, oh, there it goes. <laughs> um, in this jar, I have a mixture of Gamsol and linseed oil. And since this is a study and it's just, you know, going to be a quick thing, it doesn't really matter what I'm mixing with the paint. But this was just a jar that I had left over from another painting that I finished. So I might as well use that. All right, putting that on there. And then along the edge here. Oh, it's a bit much. Maybe a tiny bit back there too. Yeah, so those are my main strongest darks. Now I'm going to move on to the lightest lights. So as I said before, the lightest lights are where those little pinpoint highlights are in this um, setup. And so, you know, I have my white paint here. We can't really get any whiter than, you know, the white that we have, um, except that there's actually a trick, which is that if you add a little bit of yellow to your white, it ends up looking brighter than if you just use the white by itself. So adding a little yellow. And it makes sense because as we talked about, the light that's shining on this setup is a little bit yellow. Um, on its own, so um, yeah, so those highlights are going to be reflecting that color. I might just add a tiny bit of red too. I feel like I see it as a little bit pinky. So as you're starting yours, you want to really be aware of what color the light is. So make sure you have 
a single light source shining on it and pay attention to yeah, what color that is and then also what color the shadows are. For me right now, um, you can't really see it, but I have a window right over here um, and it's not sunny out at the moment. So everything outside is kind of cool. So the light that's shining in from the window is a little bit bluish and that's impacting this bluish color that I'm seeing in the shadow areas. Okay, so this is going to be my brightest white for now. And I'll just dot that in where I see it. That there. Maybe get over there. Um, yeah, I think that's good for now. Um, but yeah, so now I have my very lightest lights, my very darkest darks, and so all the other colors I find are going to be in between those two. And this is really helpful because, you know, if I were just starting with kind of a medium area like what's in here, I think I would be tempted to use a really bright white for that. But I know that because I see that strong, that um, highlight very strongly, I know that whatever goes in here is going to have to be significantly darker than um, these colors here. So yeah, speaking of that area, let me try looking for a color for there. I definitely see it as very yellow, so maybe I'll just take this color I had and add some more yellow to it. And the sun just came out outside a little bit. I don't know if you noticed. Um, that's going to change my colors a little bit, which um, is kind of annoying. If it ends up changing them too much, I'm going to have to either wait for the sun to go behind a cloud or move the setup to where it's not influencing it enough. Um, but yeah, just definitely be aware of what kind of light is shining on your setup. And if it changes, stop painting. And, you know, don't keep working on it because everything's going to be different. So I started by adding more yellow to this color. Now I think I'm going to add a little red again. Um, that didn't really do anything, so a little more red. And I'm holding this up here to check if I put this against that highlight color, will the highlight color really show up strongly against it? And right now I can kind of see the difference, but it's not a big difference. So I think this needs to be much darker. So to darken it, that means I think I'm going to try adding all three primary colors to it. So a little blue, a little red, a little yellow. That darkened it more. Um, I think I still need some more blue. So this is really, as I'm mixing here, I'm thinking mainly about the relationships between the colors. Um, so 
you know, with the color swatches exercise that we did before, you could actually hold it up against the color and like directly compare. Here it's much harder to do that. Um, I can hold it up in front of the, the setup here, but the light on my palette knife is very different from the light on there, so it's hard to tell. But if I know that this is my color for my highlights, then comparing this to that, um, that's how I, I can get clued in onto what this color needs to be. And I think it still needs to be darker. So it's like I look at the highlight on the object and I look at the color next to it and I think like how do those two colors compare, um, which if I were to put it into words, the bigger area of color is a little darker and a little duller in color too. So I think that means it's grayer and has more blue in it. So that's why I keep adding some blue. I think that might be getting close. Uh, I can definitely see the difference between them now. Maybe add a little more red. Hmm. Kind of like that. Let's try it. And you know, it might seem like it took a really long time to make that color, which it did, but the good thing is on this, I'm not going to be making a hundred colors. I just want to make um, enough colors to get a sense of what the light and shadow are doing and how the colors are interacting. And that's kind of the aim of this exercise. And, you know, within this area, there are a lot of variations of color, but I'm just going to fill in that whole section. And of course, I didn't make enough of that color, so I'm going to make more. See if I can do it. Now I can use my uh, color comparing skills again. So it keeps looking a little too yellow, so I'm adding uh, red and blue to it. I think that's pretty close. And you can see I'm using a lot of paint. I'm really loading up the brush with paint and putting it on. And I have to do that because I have this color that's wet underneath. Um, and if I, if I try using just a little paint with that, it's going to start mixing with the color that's underneath, which I don't want because I just spent so much time mixing that beautiful color. Um, and this same color, I want to look for where else I can put it on the object. And I think it's along the rim all along here. So, you know, there might, there are some subtle variations in it, but it's more important to just get a color that's like, this is the color for where the light is hitting the object. And I'm also not concerned really with how I'm putting the color on. Um, I'm just trying to cover up the surface. I 
I'm going to go over that highlight color actually and then put it back in on top because that actually looks really nice if you have the highlight be a moment of thicker paint that's on top. And I'll do that here too, just to Yeah, it's interesting right here, the rim is really light, but then as it curves around along here, it sort of goes into shadow. So I'm going to need a different color for right in there. And I think I can also put the same color maybe on the ground here next to it. Yeah, I'm debating if this area is a light as this, so I think the ground is lighter and then right here is a little bit darker. I don't know if you can see on the screen, but um, whenever you're looking at your object, you're asking yourself like, what's, what's lighter, this or this? And here, this is definitely lighter and this is a little bit darker, so I'm gonna put the light color down here. Yeah, and I think, you know, the color changes a little bit as it goes this way, but for now I'm just going to use the same color, which means I need more of it again, which is really annoying. I should have just made like, a ton to begin with. And yeah, since my drawing isn't precise here, I'm just kind of putting this color where I think it might go. And it's better to err on the side of putting down more of the color than might be there, because you can always paint over it with other colors. Um, but yeah, it's better to just cover up the canvas with whatever you have, and you can always change things later. Okay, so there is that. I want to put my highlights back in now because those are nice to have. So, white, put it up here so I can see. Oops, that's way too much yellow. And I'm having to use really thick paint here so that it goes on top. Um, but that's good because you want the highlights to really pop out.
And it's good having that darker color underneath because you don't usually get highlights that are like right against uh, like a shadow area or something. They're usually inside of a larger light area. So it's good to have them kind of surrounded in that way. All right, what should I do next? I think I want to look for the color of the shadow inside here. And I have some interesting, like, different colors of shadows going on here. Like, there's the color inside there that's kind of like a more neutral gray. And then this shadow here is a little more bluish, I think. And then this shadow here um, has a lot of blue as well, but is darker. And at this point, I can decide if I'm going to put all of those things in now or if I just do them all as one shadow to begin with. Um, what will I do? I guess. I think I actually, in value, I see this shadow and this shadow is pretty similar. Um, so maybe I'll start with that and do both of those um, at the same time. So I think my shadow is going to have a lot of blue in it. Um, but that is definitely too strong a blue and a bit too dark, I think. So I need to neutralize it by adding a little red and a little yellow into it. And then also a little light. That might have been way too much, let's see. Actually, not that bad for the shadow that's right here. And you might have noticed the sun just came out again, which is really annoying. Um, right now, this is looking a little bit green, and I don't want it to be green. I want it to be more just neutral. So if it's too green, that means it has too much blue and too much yellow, so I have to add a little red in to neutralize that green. And it turns out this red, the cadmium red light, is kind of a weak mixing color, so I'm having to use a lot of it. Um, which is interesting because most of the reds that I normally use are uh, really strong mixing colors. Oh, it's a little more neutral. And that there's a lot of variation within this area of shadow. I think this is pretty good. It's a little on the dark side, um, but like if I compare it to how dark that is for the darkest spot, I think it should do the trick. So I'm going to try putting that in. That's pretty good. I just noticed this kind of goes across like that. Um,
Yeah. And now, once again, I didn't make nearly enough of that color, um, which I'm wondering if I'll ever learn how much I actually need to make. Um, but I want to go ahead and make the color for this, the shadow here, which is going to be similar, I think. So I'll just start with some red, some yellow, and some blue. That got way too red, so more blue. And cerulean is a pretty weak mixing color as well, so you always end up needing a lot of cerulean. That's actually not bad color-wise, but I think it's a bit too dark, so I'll add a little white into it. And I have to be careful with my white because I just noticed that that grayed out the color a lot, um, even with just a little bit of it. So maybe it's better to add white mixed with a little yellow. Let's see if this helps. I think I'm liking that color, and when I look at the still life, if I compare this color here to this color here that I just put in, um, I feel like this one has a little more yellow in it, and this one is a little more purpley, and that's kind of the effect that I'm getting right now between these two colors. Um, maybe use a little more red. Make it even more of a bit purple. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> and I don't really know where the back edge of my thing is right now, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, so something like that for the shadow. Maybe this can continue over here a little bit. And now that it's on, I can analyze, you know, is that color working right with this color that's here? I think it's pretty good at this point, so. I'll leave it. Um, now I want to find a color for this shadow area in here. Um, and if I compare it to this, it's pretty similar, but it's a little bit lighter and a little bit bluer, I think. So, mixing colors again. This is probably a bit too much. Definitely not bluer than what I had before, so I need a lot more blue. And if I had made enough of this color, 
I could have just taken that same color and added some blue, added some white to it, and that probably would have been easier than having to start over. Getting there. So if I just compare this to this, it's it looks bluer, but it's definitely not lighter yet. So I'm going to add some white to it to lighten it. Looking lighter. Yeah, maybe just a little more, and I think that might work for now. Yeah, we'll try that. And I just ran out of the right size of brushes, so I have to clean off this one that I used before. I think I like that color. And here we got some like stripey things going along here. I'm not really sure where the edge of the shadow is, um, but I don't really need to worry about that right now. I can just uh, kind of decide where I'm going to put it and just if I if I get really uh, enthusiastic later I can put in some of the stripes. Yeah, so there's that. And then I'm also noticing in the background back here, that's a really similar color to what's here. So I might as well do that at the same time, which of course means I need to mix more of the color. Yeah, I'm hoping that all of you will learn from my mistakes and make enough of the color at the beginning. No, it's not that actually, but I'll take it back. That was unexpected. <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and put that color in here. Yeah, and as I'm putting it in, I can kind of check it against this color here, make sure that those are comparing in the right way. I think they're pretty good. Now too, that should go to there. Um, all right, I think we're good. 
getting there. I just need to find a color for here and a color for here. So let's see, what shall I do first? Maybe I'll do this one first um, since it relates to this color. So yeah, if I compare those areas here and here, um, this is definitely lighter and yellower, whereas this is kind of purpler and darker. So if I add some white and some yellow to this, maybe that'll get me what I need. Okay, that just made it really green. Um, and I don't really want it to be green, um, so I need to add some red to it to cancel out the green. And that's a little green. Okay, now that's looking kind of red. Um, so I guess if it's too red, maybe if I add a little more blue and a little more yellow to it. Let's see. We'll start with a little yellow. Okay, if I compare those two now, this definitely looks yellower and that looks bluer, um, which that's what I was aiming for, that this would be more yellow, but it's not looking lighter right now. It's yellow, but like the same value, so I need to add some white into it. So, yeah, I mean, I just think this is, a really cool exercise because it's like everything is white and you first look at it and you're like um you know it's like oh there's no color in that still life but actually there are so many extremely varied colors in it um okay it's looking a little bit lighter could be a bit lighter I think and then maybe still a little more yellow. It seems like the yellow really has a tendency to take over with this palette so I'm having to be very cautious with adding that. And I also want to be aware that this color should be darker than the color that's here. So it's lighter than that but darker than that. getting there. We're getting there. I think that is pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, and the brushes I'm using for this, um, they're all bristle brushes, which means that they're pretty stiff. Um, the brand that I like is the the Plaza, um, and then it says it's Georgetown, so that's like this type of bristles, and I really like the Filbert shape. Um, and yeah, this is a six, which is um, basically as small as I need to go at this point. So yeah, using like a six or larger, I think is great for this exercise. 
And the bristle brushes are particularly good because um, if you use, and these are, I think they're real bristles, not synthetic. Um, and I have just found that that, for me, holds the paint best and really um, allows like the brush to hold a lot of paint and then put it on the surface right over the top of other colors of paint. So um, yeah, basically for almost everything, this is like my kind of go-to brush. It's only when I get into painting things that have a lot of detail or if I want the surface to be really, really smooth that I would um, start to use different kinds of brushes. Okay, um, so just one more big area of color to go, which is here, and I think it's pretty similar in color to this, it just may be a little bit lighter when I compare this edge and this edge, like here and here, this one is a little bit lighter than that. So now I have to recreate that color again. Maybe I have a better idea of how to do it now. So that's pretty close to the color I had there, but now I need to lighten it a little bit. So just adding some white. That's a little lighter. So making sure right now it's like the color I'm trying to put here is a little bit lighter than what's here, but it's darker than what's here. So I need to make sure I get that balance. I think I might have just gone a little bit too light with that. So I'm adding more yellow and more red back into it to make it um, a little darker and also a little more vibrant because I think adding the white dulled it down a little too much. And it's getting there. That's still lighter than that. Okay, now it's definitely darker than this. Maybe not really lighter than that anymore, so I have to add a little light back into it. Maybe if I just do this very cautiously, I can get it.
that might do the trick. Let me try putting that in. So something like that, um, and that is the basic exercise. Um, now I want to just like take a breath, take a step back from it, and ask myself, are all of these colors generally working together? Um, is there anything that feels like it's off right now? Um, that I want to change, you know, without making anything more detailed. Um, is there anything that's not working? You know. And also, I'm not concerned about drawing right now. I know my drawing is a little wonky, but um, that's not really the point of the exercise, and I can always fix it later if I need to. I guess the main things that are bothering me are right in here. I feel like this shadow could be lighter. I don't see it as as strong a contrast there. And also the same thing here that this part could be lighter. Um, I guess those are kind of like adding another level of detail to this, but maybe I'll just try. I think it would make me feel better if I made a lighter version of this shadow color to go right in here. So first I'm just going to try to approximate that color. That's fairly close, but now I want to try lightening it. And yeah, as I'm finding with this, I think the lightening part is tricky because it tends to dull down the colors a lot, which isn't usually what I want. Oh man, the sun just came out again. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I'm going to try putting that in. So I, I basically just added um, white to that same color that I had, and I think this might work. I'm not exactly sure where it goes because the sun is shining on my object now. Um, so I won't know until the sun goes behind a cloud, but something like that. And then maybe I could also put it in this part. Um, yeah, and if I wanted to start doing a little more detail. Um, like one thing I could do is I could put in some of these little textures here. That kind of thing. Um, and it's nice because even when I'm looking at the ramekin in real life, um, I don't see the texture very clearly all along. I don't see it equally everywhere. Um, when I look here, they kind of all blend together along here and they all blend together in the shadow, but it's just like where it's transitioning from the shadow 
into the light that I really start to notice um, the texture. So if you're aiming to do a bit more detail on these, really look for like where is it that you actually notice more detail and only put it in in those spots. So like maybe here, yeah, and try to, with the colors you have, um, put those into more places so that it starts to show the detail that way. Um, this color to show the rim and all kind of thing um yeah so I could keep playing with it but essentially that first stage you know what I just did where you're just getting all the colors and then covering the canvas and making them all work together that's the the essential part of this exercise And once you get to that stage, it's kind of hard to stop because, um, you know, then you have all your colors available to you and you can start analyzing them and making everything work together a little more. Um, yeah, that's kind of when the fun begins, I guess. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you will all try this um, using whatever white object you might have around the house um, and just really focusing on the big areas and trying to get those colors working right. Um, yeah, so I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching.